ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Sinatra. There ought to be clowns Just when I stop Opening doors He entered this world on December 12, 1915, and he almost left that same day. But I'll let Frank tell you about that. I was born uh, in 1915 on December 12th, and I've... They told me a very wintry, terrible day. And my mother, who weighed approximately nine, 92 pounds, uh, and I weighed uh, 12 and 3 quarter pounds, and when I was born, I mean, when I was removed from her womb by a midwife, there was a problem. I didn't want to come out of there. <laughs> and uh, they finally, they sent up a flare for a doctor. And upon removing me, I was uh, pretty well damaged of my left side of my neck and ear and face. However, he put me aside. I was told this by my grandmother and one of my aunts who was present in a kitchen table in a, in a four-room flat. And uh, he set me aside in order to save my mother's life. And my grandmother, uh, who had more sense than anybody in the room as far as I'm concerned because she... <laughs> She knew what to do with me. And she stuck me under the ice cold water in a, in a, in a cold water flat and apparently uh, got some blood moving around and whacked me around a little bit. And uh, I, I, have, I have blessed that day, that moment, in her honor ever since. Because otherwise I, would not, I wouldn't be here with you tonight. And uh, I think about her very often. She was a great lady. Anyway. I grew. Not large, but I grew. With the formation of the first two networks, NBC in 1927 and CBS in 1928, Sinatra, along with the rest of the country, witnessed the popularity that singers began to enjoy. He loved singing and playing his uncle's ukulele and performed in the street whenever he could. Sinatra was determined from the outset to create a unique sound. Everybody around him was trying to imitate Bing Crosby, the most popular singer of the time. However, what turned Frank onto Bing was primarily his success. Money and power lured Frank from the beginning. Winning the Major Bowes Original Amateur Hour Talent Contest was the launching pad for Sinatra's career. In 1934, it was the most popular radio show in the United States, receiving 10,000 applications a week from would-be contestants. Major Bowes paired Sinatra with three instrumentalists, all from Hoboken. But the Hoboken Four didn't last long. Frank did not like sharing the spotlight with others. Times were rough for Frank during the period between the Hoboken Four and his first steady singing job. It was the Rustic Cabin Roadhouse in New Jersey for $25 a week that got Frank his first real break. Band leader Harry heard Frank sing and signed him for $75 a week. Frank recorded his first hit, All or Nothing at All, with Harry James in 1939. But the James Band wasn't a commercial success, so Frank kept his eyes open for a chance to move on. That chance came along with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra in 1940. Tommy Dorsey's band was special in that its music focused more on the vocalist than the instruments. Within the first year, the band had a best-selling record. Frank recorded over 80 songs with Dorsey, This Love of Mine, I'll Never Smile Again, and Stardust. He learned a lot from Dorsey. Sinatra's popularity inevitably led to tension between he and Dorsey. Recording executives wanted Sinatra's name to appear on the records, and soon, Dorsey was forced into letting Sinatra make his own. This was said to be the first turning point in his career. He knew it was time to go solo. Tommy didn't want to let go, and the price of Frank's independence was not cheap, $60,000. The Paramount. One could make the assertion that the birth of Sinatra the Performer occurred on his opening night at the Paramount Theater in New York on New Year's Eve, 1942. 
He had been billed as an extra added attraction in small print at the bottom of the marquee under the main act, Benny Goodman. Frank had serious stage fright that night, for he sensed that his performance that evening could make or break his career. His performance was breathtaking and commanded a resounding ovation. Benny Goodman humorously asked, who the hell was that? By the next day, mobs of young women appeared and stood in a line that stretched around the block and caused a traffic jam around Times Square. The hysteria on the part of the swooning Bobby Soxers at the Paramount was the birth of the phenomenon the press called Sinatrauma. The phenomenon climaxed with what came to be known as the Columbus Day Riot in 1944. 30,000 fans packed the streets around Times Square trying to get tickets for his show at the Paramount, a 5,000-seat theater. Frustrated that the show was sold out, the fans resorted to vandalism and wreaked havoc in the streets of New York. Lucky strikes your hit parade. His success at the Paramount catapulted him to CBS's flagship program, Lucky Strikes Your Hit Parade. Each week, the show presented the 10 most popular songs in America. But tension began to arise due to artistic differences between Frank and the cigarette company. Lucky Strike wanted to steer away from the sensuality of Frank's songs, while he wanted to sing slowly and while belting out the emotion that came so naturally to him. In addition to hosting your hit parade, he did his own non-sponsored national co-starring series, Broadway Bandbox, in May of 1943. The latter was on Saturday nights, while the former was aired on Saturdays. Before long, Broadway Bandbox was dropped, and Frank did his second, Songs by Sinatra. The program was by far the most intellectual commercial radio series in pop music, since Frank was determined to pay tribute to the likes of Irving Berlin, Johnny Mercer, as well as the current hits. His job and his work were at the height of glamour, and Hollywood, at the height of his career, there were more stars than there are in heaven. That was MGM Studios' motto. Frank was accepted as an equal by Ava Gardner, Judy Garland, Fred Astaire, and Clark Gable. Here he forged friendships that would last all his life. He worked and perfected his craft with the brightest stars in Hollywood. People like Gene Kelly, Angela Lansbury, later to star with Sinatra in The Manchurian Candidate. Spencer Tracy, who admired Sinatra's straightforward style and later co-starred with Sinatra in The Devil at Four O'Clock. Along with some of the biggest MGM musical stars, Frank Sinatra appeared in the big budget musical Spectacular, Till the Clouds Roll By. In the beginning of his film career, Frank managed to get small singing roles, but left the rest of the work to the real actors. Take three. If you're a Frank was an early supporter of racial and ethnic tolerance, as seen in his 1945 documentary entitled The House I Live In, which received a special Academy Award. Frank continued to actively support liberal writers and performers throughout his life. Just give me five minutes and I'll have the other number ready. I'll get a smoke. Next number, boys. Do you know what this wonderful country is made of? It's made up of a hundred different kind of people and a hundred different ways of talking and a hundred different ways of going to church. In Till the Clouds Roll By, Frank made a brief guest appearance singing Old Man River in 1946. That old man river He must know something but he don't say nothing, he just keeps rolling, he keeps on rolling along. From out of 
On the Town was the first musical ever to be filmed on location in New York City. It received great acclaim and was one of MGM's best. Sailors on leave find intellectual freedom in its many cultural points of interest. And as this is a story of New York, we naturally begin it in Brooklyn. <laughs> New York, New York, a wonderful town. The Bronx is up and the battery's down. The people ride in a hole in the ground. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. Hey, hum, diddy, hum, diddy, hum, diddy, 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 hum, diddy, hum, diddy, hum, diddy, 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 Ava Gardner was the love of his life. It was a match made in heaven and hell. Both were obsessive, hot-tempered, and overly possessive. From relatively humble beginnings, both became Hollywood icons. Heavy drinkers, their marriage was doomed because each required more love than the other was capable of giving. Their breakup sent shockwaves throughout Hollywood. His love for her was so intense that it nearly crippled his career. His health deteriorated. His weight dropped to 118 from 132 pounds. Frank and Ava divorced in 1957. Their romance was perhaps the most talked about in the world, rivaling that of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Remember his bow ties, weren't they gay? A wonder this kid never flew away. But I'm glad he's not young anymore. When I was a kid in Hasbrook Heights, his singing was one of my delights. But I'm glad that he's not young anymore. They are reunited. This ought to be quite a fake. I'm so delighted. I may just shatter or melt. I know how Grace felt. I'm so glad that we asked him. Glad to come. You're going to stay the full hour. Mm, perhaps, chum. I do feel this hour is not a ball. Oh, I'm so glad that they're not young. The notes that he bent, the yips, the yipes, the squealing of adolescent types. I'm so glad he's not young anymore. Now the gold of the day that he implored, well, all of that gold is in his heart. And I'm not glad that he's not young anymore. Double negative. They're both pretending. They just adore what they do. Thank you. Their friends unending. Fickle. Is that what they got? Boy, is he sweet. Schedule is tight. Well, let's say, just say terse. His lines won't be right. I refuse to rehearse. Oh. We hope you got some idea what's in store. Oh, how we wish that we were young. Like before We're on the moon now The ships can fall where they may We're out to prove now That life's a rollicking thing Ring-a-ding-ding The show we've designed is nicely paced It's mounted in glass and glass and case If something crashes Beat you to the door. Oh, oh how we wish that we were young like
Delicious, Frank. Beautiful. Very bobbly, bangly, beady. She do cast a spell. She do indeed. She sure do. Well, pull up a glass and sit down, Frank. You know, I, with all this glass around, I can't understand nobody's pouring anything around. Here. <laughs> but may I, you bingo, that this is the only way to do a show I adore working, sitting down like oh, this. Well, I'm so happy you approve. I think in our next show, we should be a show lying down. This would be the horizontal hour, huh? Yes, I think better off my feet. Say, tell me, how do you stay in such shape? Somebody's knocking on my bone there. <laughs> how do you do it, boy? <laughs> I don't. Did you, ever, did you ever consider, just give it a thought, to take a run down to Vic Tanny's gymnasium? I have, but it makes me nervous. <laughs> Vic could develop your body just wonderfully. I don't need this one developed. I need a new one. <laughs> Well, I don't know what you ought to do if I were you. I'd drag what you got left down to that lovely house of yours in Palm Springs and rest up a bit. I've got a flash for you. I can't get in my lovely house at Palm Springs. Did you lose your key? Only when I sing. <laughs> no, what do you mean you can't get in your house? Palm I can't get into the house, Bing, because it's full of people. Well, are these people friends of yours? I don't know. I can't get in to find out. <laughs> well, you're the gregarious, expansive, convivial type of fella, Won't be you're always going to be plagued with house guests. Well, do you have house guests? Sure. Oh, of course you do. You have a new one every year, don't you? <laughs> that slipped my mind for yeah, a She's a doll, too. <laughs> but back to the other type of house guest. I figure that anyone who has a house on the, uh, anybody has a house on the desert, uh, don't people barge in all the time, like on you, for instance? No, no, not me. You know what I do? What do you do? I put my house guests up at a hotel. What a sneak you are. <laughs> Takes one to know one, Daddy. <laughs> but I have a problem, you see. What's this? There is no hotel in the nearby vicinity of my house. What are you talking about? There's a great, big, luxurious hotel right next door to your place. What happened to it? It moved. <laughs> you mean it retreated? <laughs> it left town. But all the better. That's really better, pal, because actually, the hotel shouldn't be too near. I'm beginning to see the light, oh, foxy one. <laughs> You hang around me, Daddy, and you'll get very devious. By the way, where do you sack up your guests when they come to Palm Springs? I put them at the El Mirador. Isn't that rather expensive? Oh, no, no, not the El Mirador in Palm Springs. This is uh, uh, down the road a piece. It's called the El Mirador Enchilada Parlor and Cabins. <laughs> it sounds rather Spanish. Oh, it is. My recording of Estrellita is very large on the jukebox there. <laughs> Gad, what a treat. <laughs> But it's worn so thin, really, I sound like Morton Downey. Even right? better, yeah. even better. That's, that's a plus, all right. <laughs> you know something, Bing? I've knocked around the desert pretty good in the past few years, but I cannot place a hotel called the El Mirador Enchilada Parlor and, and cabins. cabins. Well, you know motels. Do I know motels? Not <laughs> Bones, you, you might know this place by, uh, by another name, the former name. It used to be called, you know, the uh, La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha, yeah. No. Why, how come La Cucaracha? Well, well, they changed it, really, because it was all too true. <laughs> Strange, but I really cannot seem to remember that, uh, that uh, place. Oh, oh, you must have passed it driving around. You must have passed it a million times. It's a bright red and yellow layout, kind of a lot of cabins, and it's a few miles south of Brawley. Mm, on the road to Mexicali. You mean. Well, it's in the suburbs of Mexicali. Yeah. <laughs> I've got it. You got it? That's the place where the house detective rides around on a burro. <laughs> <laughs> you would remember the house officer. You naturally, dog, you naturally. Would... He knocks on the door with a maraca. He he had... Had... <laughs> Everybody out. Well, I did it. Well, I tell you, you'd, you'd enjoy a, a weekend down there, Frank. The beds are comfortable, and, and it's an added inducement. They serve a delightful continental breakfast. You're joshing. No, on the level. They give you a large shot of tequila, a hot tamale, and a big ladle, a big scoop of uh, frijoles. Hot Burnsville before you get your eyes open. <laughs> and then you got a choice, too, of beverages. You, you can have coffee, tea, milk, or a bromo seltzer. What would you recommend? Take the bromo, you won't last till lunch. <laughs> I remember that. Whenever I stay there, of course, which is on very rare occasions, I always get a room with a wall bed. Well, why? Well, you see, that's in case the maid comes in with the breakfast. She never looks for me in the wall bed. <laughs> I see your point. Well, why be, it shouldn't be as difficult as that. Why not just hide in the bathroom? Oh, no. That, that poses quite a problem. To well, go to the bathroom, I'd have to put, off my, put on my robe and slippers and walk across the highway. 
Across the highway? Yes, you see, the, the bathroom is over in the annex. That's, uh, that's the Union Oil Station over there. <laughs> I got it now. I've often seen people running across that highway and from the Mirador cabins and yeah. in their bathrobes. I always thought it was a fire drill or a raid or something. <laughs> Well, sometimes it's one thing, sometimes it's another thing. Ah, there you go. However, if I can ever get my house back, I'm going to ship my guests down to that trap. It's an experience, I tell you, Frank, they'll, they'll never forget. My house is an experience. My guests will never oh, forget. Oh, I'm <laughs> quite sure of that. Here well, comes our whoop, girl. Here comes the bobbles, bangles, and beads girl. Hi. Hi. How are you? How you feeling? Just fine. You know that, Peg, that song that you did gave me a marvelous idea. Oh, your songs give me ideas too, Frank. Well, wow. no, that's not what I meant. What I meant was that I thought the three of us should kind of cook up an act, you see. We'll call ourselves Bobbles, Bangles, and Bead. Mm -hmm. I'll be Bobbles? I love Bangles. I'm stuck with Bead. <laughs> bead. I feel like well, a character out of Charles Dickens. Well, we're on our way then. Shall, Shall we, we go? Yeah. No, oh, wait a minute. Oh, for my idea, we, we, we need three pianos and three piano players. Oh, we got them. We got Nobby, Steinway, and Baldwin over there. We got three guys to steer them, too. In a way, we <laughs> I mean, he's Paul Smith, a jazz man from the L.A. And you know Bushkin, I mean Joe Bushkin, plays for kicks instead of pay. They're just the Christmas when they go, especially at a P.I.A.N.O. We love to stop right beside an upright on a high tone baby grand. When you sigh, never in my world land could there be ways to reveal in a phrase how I feel. Have you ever heard two turtle doves, Bill and Coo? When they love, that's the kind of magic music we make with our lips when we kiss. Somebody else She do mean her tender songs For somebody else <laughs> And even when I have my arms Around her I know her thoughts are strong For somebody else And the hands I hold belong To somebody else I'll bet they're not so cold to somebody else. 
It's tough to be alone on the shelf. Worse to fall in love by yourself. The one I love belongs to somebody else. somebody else and I'll bet they're not so cold to somebody else because it's tough to be alone on the shelf worse to fall in love by yourself because the one that I love belongs to somebody else Listen, willow, and weep for me. Gone, my lover's dream. Lovely summer's dream. Gone and left me here to weep my tears into the stream. Sad as I can be, hear me, willow, and weep for me. Whisper to the wind and say that love has sinned. Left my heart a breaking and making a moan. Murmur to the night, 
to hide its starry light so none will see me crying and sighing all along the weeping willow tree weep in sympathy bend your branches down along the ground and cover me when the shadows fall bend the willow and weep for Mississippi. <laughs> yes, we'll take a boat to the land of dreams. Steam down that river down to New Orleans. Yes, Basin Street, get you there. Yes, and all our old friends are gonna greet us. When there's old friends to greet us. Yes. That's where the south and the south first grab that beat. Oh, this heaven on earth, they call it Basin Street. Yes, Basin, Basin Street. Basin Street. Oh, yeah. That's the street. Oh, yeah. Where the elite oh, always be. Singing, in New Orleans. Ba -ba -ba 
land of dreams. You never know how nice it seems, just how much it really means. Sing it, Bobby. I'm glad to be. Oh, Bobby. Oh, yes, sir. Where welcome's free, so dear to me. Where I can live all my basin speed blue. Basin Street. You know that that's the street where it all started, true? That's right. I started close to Basin Street. I know you did. Because of all the rules around there, they all had a beach, you know. Pretty good beat, huh? Yes, yeah, I know. They all had a beat. You take a Basin Street, Bourbon Street, St. Louis Street, Bienville Street, they all got palpitating pavements. I've heard that. Yes, indeed. The old French Quarter still swings. French Quarter. Oh, yeah. how I'd like to be down there now. You know what I'd do? I'd head straight for Brennan's restaurant, <laughs> and I'd uh, inhale a delightful calorie or two. <laughs> Food, I'm speaking. Look here, man. Hmm? Did you ever eat some of them French donuts and coffee in New Orleans? Ain't no other place to get them. <laughs> no other place. But back to the beat, Lou. I got my mind on a tune now that used to go pretty good in a Dixieland style. Used to go pretty large for me, anyhow. Well. You think I can cut it? I think you still can make it. About eight to one. <laughs> eight to one. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Yes, everybody wants my baby. But my baby don't want nobody but me. That's plain to see. She got a form like Venus on a stranger. Ain't talking Greece. Ain't nobody gonna come between us. She's my Sheba, I'm a sheep. Everybody loves my baby. But my baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Papa, you laid it that time. You laid it. <laughs> you know what I'd like to do right in through here? Where's that, Papa? I'd like to just lay on lazy bones one time. Oh, boy, we got the bones to do it, you know. Friends, this is a study in suspended animation. <laughs> lazy bones. Lazy bones, he says. Sitting in the sun. I love that. How you ever expect to get your day's work done? Now, I never expect to get my day's work done. You're not concentrating. I ain't concentrating on nothing. Okay. <laughs> Say, you cats are flying pretty high up here, ain't you? Are you interested in this kind of action? Am I? I got to join this group. Well, you're nominated, you know. Yes. I second the motion, man. If you just fork over uh, some dough for your dues, we'll lay a paid-up card right on you. I accept. Let's go. If I could be with you, I'd love you long. If I could be with you, I would love you strong. I want you to know that I'd never go till I told you, baby, how much I love you so. If I could be with you an hour and a night, if I were free to do all the things that I might, I'm telling you true, I'd be anything but blue. If I could be with you with a small jug, if I could be with you, yeah. River, old milk, lazy, lazy river in the noonday sun. Linger in the shade of a kind old tree. Throw away your troubles, dream a dream with me. Up the lazy river where the robin's song makes a bright new morning we can float along. Blue skies up above, everyone's in love. Up the lazy river, how happy we can be. Up the lazy river with me. Yeah. 
to the finest part of town. I don't have wings or all those fancy things. But as long as I have been, we're in high society. The pale moon shining on the fields below. The folks are crooning soft and low. You needn't tell me why, because I know. When it's sleepy time down south. Steamboats on the river are coming and going, splashing the night away. You hear those banjos ringing, all the folks are singing, the oh, baby. And they dance till the break of day. Southland with his dreamy song. Yeah. <laughs> Take me back where I belong. Right in my valley. When it's sleepy time, down south. Take some skin, jazz begin, and you take a bass. Man, now we're getting someplace. Oh, take a box, one that rocks. Take a blue horn, New Orleans bar. Hey, Pops, you want to take a little of what's left here? Yeah, you better give me what's left, man. Uh, here we go. <laughs> if we sail, 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 over the sea, how will you wait for me? Take my tip, we're all going to hip in Italy. Oh, well, our Dutch is for France. Oh, I know you're very big yeah, over there. Believe it or not. I do believe, I do indeed. The French would all prefer what they call lame jazz. I Follow me now. Take a plane. Got it. Papa don't say it. Good as I am. I'm a movie say. Yes, in Bangkok today, round the clock. Well, they all like jazz. Papa don't do say. The Indian song. Papa don't say that. The Indian song. Beat one bar and over the mile. The wind comes and comes from the equator up to Pole. Everybody singing, everybody singing, and rock, 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 rock and roll from the east to the west, from the coast to the coast. Jazz is king, jazz is the thing, and folks, they. Show! Sure. Sure.